E for four, two, three, four. E seven for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. E for four, two, three, four. E for four, two, three, four. E for four, two, three, four. E seven for four. Okay, some tips now to help you play um, Hey Jude by the Beatles. Now, the first chord change which comes in this song is probably the most difficult chord change that you have to do. That's this E chord change to the B7 chord change. Now, it looks simple, but actually it's much more complicated for your fingers to get, um, to get around doing than, than, it, than it actually looks. What I'd suggest for you guys when you're starting out is um, you may also just simply try moving one finger at a time like this and then trying that with the other finger just doing that that way you get your fingers used to doing individually what what the movement they're going to have to do once you spend a bit of time doing that you can then try and do both fingers together like so you don't need to necessarily play with the right hand just simply doing this perhaps whilst watching television or whilst you know waiting for the waiting for the uh, kettle to boil or something like this this is all really valuable practice without having to actually play and strum the song, um, the chord, sorry. Now, when you do this, probably at the beginning what will happen is you'll have to do this in steps, like so. Probably one finger, then the other finger. Now this is completely normal. It'll take a little while for your fingers to get used to this, but after a while, when you start to become more comfortable, try and land both fingers together at the same time, like this. Now, when you try and do this, You'll probably find, if you're doing it correctly, you'll find that your fingers kind of freak out in midair and we'll sort of do this and then we'll land. Try and do this and then they'll land. That's actually a really good thing. That means that shows that if your fingers are doing that in midair, they're kind of uh, freaking out in midair. It shows that you're doing the right thing. The next chord chain, E to A, is quite simply this. You keep your first finger where it is and we just do this. Now, later on when you're more advanced, we won't use these kind of like stabilizer wheels or crutches to help you with your playing, but at this stage it's absolutely fine for you to, to leave your first finger there, just to make life easier for you. So that's what I'd recommend you do for that part. Now for the outro, um, I would, this is all about using your first finger in terms of um, the first chord E to the next chord D. So if you're going from E to D, what you do is you see, if you look at the first finger here, that is just to be sliding across one and that provides you the reference point for your then your third finger to land into here so that's what you do so you just do this like so and this is a good chord change to practice as well in isolation without necessarily strumming so you do that chord slide your first across to the D chord 
then you can do a number, one of two things. You can either slide your first finger back and put the um, fingers down for the A chord like that, or you can go from here and just and not slide your fingers back. You know, slow your first finger back. Um, either is fine. Probably ultimately you'll you'll be doing this version where you don't slide your first finger back. But do whichever is the the one which is easiest for you to do at this stage. Whatever is easiest for you to do at this stage is the right thing to do. So if you find that that's going back like this, then that's great. Do that, and that then sets you up for the E chord because then you've got your first finger already in place. If you find actually that sliding your first finger back here confuses you a bit, then don't do it. You don't have to do it. You can just you go from here and jump to the A chord like so.